Planet Earth is an incredible place. Our sun provides the energy for all our habitat, our climate, and the millions of species of life that live here. But is Earth unique? For thousands of years, mankind has wondered, given the vastness of space, could there be other Earths out there that could be home to intelligent life? As an astronomer, this question has always fascinated me. As a child, I would often lay awake late at night in my bed, wondering, given how vast the universe is, could there be other forms of life led in their beds, wondering the very same thing? Until the 90s, we knew of no other planets orbiting around any other stars. Today, I'd like to share with you what we now know about distant Earths, how many we think are out there, how many may have the conditions for life, and why I'm confident that they're definitely out there somewhere, even if they never call. Our incredible solar system is home to eight planets. Nine if you feel bad about downgrading Pluto to a dwarf planet. Only one of these planets is close enough to the sun to melt ice into liquid water, but not too close to boil the water into steam in the atmosphere. If our planet was significantly smaller, the solar wind would strip off our atmosphere leaving it inhospitable to life as we know it. If Earth was much larger, it would be hotter and more volcanic. We'd all be stronger, slower, and heavier. And because the pull of gravity would be much stronger, we'd all be a bit more down to Earth. Life has evolved to adapt to a huge range of conditions on Earth, from the high pressure trenches at the bottom of the oceans to the snow-capped mountain peaks. If it can evolve in such a huge range of environments here, perhaps if it forms elsewhere, it can also evolve and adapt. So on how many planets could this be possible in our universe? A planet orbiting around a distant star is called an exoplanet. One way we can spot these exoplanets is looking for the tiny drop in brightness that we see as the planet passes in front of its star. Each time the planet completes an orbit, we observe the same fractional drop in brightness. The chance of seeing this drop in brightness is pretty small because the planet and the star have to line up perfectly from our point of view. But if we're observing millions of stars, at least some of their planets will be in the right place at the right time. For a distant alien looking back towards our sun, the chance they would see either the Earth Mars or Venus passing in front of our star is about 1%, which means the chances we have of observing a similar planetary system around a distant star is about the same, about 1%. NASA's Kepler satellite spent almost 10 years observing the same patch of sky, looking for these tiny variations in the brightness. Kepler was retired last year on the 388th anniversary of Johannes Kepler's death, and had discovered over 2,500 exoplanets. These planets could be smaller than Earth, all the way up to larger than Jupiter. But what's even more amazing than the planets it discovered is all the planets that it missed. If we apply this idea of the lucky alignment of the planet and its star to all of the data on the discovered exoplanet so far, we see that in our part of the Milky Way, there are about the same number of planets as there are stars. The most recent count is about 4,000 discovered exoplanets. And we now know that a small fraction of these contain water. When a planet passes in front of its star, the starlight will shine through the planet's atmosphere. But not all of the light will make it through. The atmosphere will absorb certain frequencies of light, this gives us a clue as to the chemical makeup of the atmosphere. And we can get a unique signature of water in the atmosphere of these distant planets. Last year, NASA announced the discovery of water vapor in the atmosphere of the planet WASP-39b. WASP-39b is a huge Saturn-sized planet, almost 700 light years away from Earth, where the sunny side reaches a scorching 800 degrees Celsius. 
This temperature would be too high for the proteins of life to form like they have on Earth. But this study is a great demonstration of how we can accurately pinpoint and locate these watery worlds. Last month, a team from Canada and a group from London shared their findings when they used the Hubble Space Telescope to observe an exoplanet with the catchy name K218b uh, pass in front of its home star every 33 days. K218b is about 100 light years away and is about eight times the size of our planet Earth. So it's regarded as a super Earth. K218b is the first exoplanet that we've detected to have water in the atmosphere, but in the habitable zone around its star. So how many planets should we expect to have water? Water is formed of hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is one of the fundamental building blocks of the universe, formed in the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. Oxygen is formed in the cores of stars under nuclear reactions. As stars evolve and die, they can distribute their oxygen throughout the galaxy, which can then go on to form water with hydrogen. Studies show that the majority of oxygen in our galaxy is in the form of either water or carbon monoxide. A study released in 2018 by a group in the US showed that 35% of all exoplanets that are larger than Earth should be watery ocean worlds. This claim can be tested with the next generation of exoplanet satellites, like the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which was launched last year. These super-Earths are kind of like small versions of Uranus or Neptune, thick water vapor atmospheres covering vast oceans at extreme temperatures and pressures. What does this mean for our galaxy? The most recent count of the number of stars in our galaxy is between 200 and 300 billion, a huge number. How can you visualize 200 billion? Imagine filling a tennis court about a meter deep with sand. You need about 200 billion grains of sand. We now know that one in five sun-like stars is home to an Earth-sized exoplanet in the habitable range around its star. If one in five stars is like our sun, that means our Milky Way could be home to tens of billions of potentially habitable Earth-sized planets. Incredible. So when you next look up at the thousands of stars in the night sky, the closest sun-like star with an Earth-like exoplanet in the habitable zone is probably only 20 light years away and can be seen with the naked eye. I find that incredible. But what does this mean when we go even bigger? Our universe is full of beautiful galaxies. This image is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, a combination of about 10 years worth of data taken on a patch of space the same size as a pinhead held at arm's length. This image released last year contains over 15,000 galaxies. If each of these galaxies on average has a similar composition to our Milky Way, that means that in our part of the universe, there could be upwards of 10,000 billion, billion potentially habitable Earth-sized planets. Incredible. And the real number is likely to be 10 times larger because these are only the ones that can be seen with the Hubble Space Telescope. 10,000 billion billion is a huge number. If you filled the entire UK with several meters worth of sand, you need about that many grains of sand. So it's an exciting time to be alive. All of the data in the studies I've mentioned today is publicly available, free to download online, with tools to visualize and process the, the data. Astronomy is now a very data-rich science. There is always more data than there are scientists available to process it. One of the things I try to do as a teacher is to encourage students to enjoy physics and astronomy, to download the data themselves and try and play with it, try and solve some of these unanswered questions in this very exciting field. And I would encourage all young people to, be, to try and become involved in this exciting field. Play with the data yourselves access some of these problems and try and answer some of these unsolved mysteries. So to summarize, we have now discovered over 4,000 exoplanets in our part of the Milky Way. We think about 10% of stars in our Milky Way galaxy could be home to an Earth-type planet in the habitable range that could have liquid water. K218 
Could there be life on any one of these planets? Well, I think we are tantalizingly close to answering that question. But if I had to bet on it, I'd use the words of Benjamin Franklin and say it's more certain than death and taxes. Thank you.